our guest speaker today will be, uh, as the President has outlined, especially familiar to soccer fans, uh, pacing along the touchline of matches involving Aston Villa, the Premier League club uh, he now manages so well. His sporting record crosses a number of borders and codes. He managed Glasgow Celtic to a European final in 2003, played international football for Northern Ireland and played Gaelic football. Today he would speak on the theme, what it means to be Irish. Would you please welcome Martin O'Neill. President Magalise, Dr. Magalise, uh, young people. It's an absolute privilege for me to be here today. I genuinely couldn't be more pleased. My subject today, being Irish, what it means to me. I have these images in, uh, in my mind. It's an amazing couple of images. In my front room as a six-year-old, used to sneak into the room. We had two pictures hung on the wall. No, not a Rembrandt, which we couldn't afford from a council house, but a picture of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, this uh, amazing haloed ma man with a beard and a massive big heart burning, and a smaller picture, black and white, framed of Padraig Pierce. And I find this amazing that 50 years on, um, in my own house, um, not so very long ago, a group of Englishmen from the um, Football Association came in to interview me for the possibility of being manager of the English national football team. It is amazing that I thought that um, I wanted to know, first of all, where the 50 years had gone, but more interesting than that there, how did I end up there? How did that, how did that become? I was uh, brought into an Irish nationalist working class family, big family, four brothers, four sisters. I was sixth in line. Delightfully, we are all still alive, you know, some in better health than others. My mother and father have since passed on, but gave me wonderful traditions, wonderful, um, uh, wonderful culture, even though they weren't particularly well educated themselves. But I was brought into a, a very, very strong GAA background where they uh, played games. Uh, it, soccer, for instance, was frowned upon. It was our definition of Irishness. And we paraded this GAA almost like a banner. And Irish Catholics um, were brought into this environment in which we felt that as if we flourished. I think that my particular life, I'm full of anomalies, ironies, uh, paradoxes, downright contradictions to be perfectly honest. I think I might have got all of those from my father. But it was interesting because he was a founder member of the club in Kilray in County Derry where I was uh, born and brought up. Pierce is very strong GAA. And yet, he was a barber in his shop, felt absolutely no discernment whatsoever about parading a wonderful picture of uh, the Manchester United football team in his shop. It was the Busby Babes just before the Munich air crash in, uh, in 1958. And he had this fantastic picture which he displayed in the shop. And I'm sure that there were one or two of his uh, fellow Catholics who uh, may have thought that um, this could be displeasing. My father might have had an ulterior motive for it, since uh, most of his customers were Protestants. He may well have had a business eye on things. But I, I believe myself that um, he had a greater tolerance of things. I think, uh, I think that he had a great common sense. Unfortunately, he didn't pass it on but he had a great common sense and I felt this tolerance that he had shown of the other side of the community um, eventually did stand me in, in fantastic stead throughout the rest of my career. In this background, uh, I felt I flourished. It was very, very strong. I loved Gaelic. My older brothers 
ended up playing for County Derry. And uh, I spent a lot of time with my father going to the football matches, supporting them greatly. And so this was really my Irishness, very strong Irishness, which I felt very proud. And I suppose in the late 50s, other than the occasional border skirmish with the IRA and the RUC, I never felt threatened. I had a fantastic uh, upbringing and, uh, and lived reasonably peacefully with the uh, Protestant community alongside us. Where I felt that um, in 1958, when I was six years of age, County Derry got to the All-Ireland final. And uh, my brother, who was 18 years of age at the time, was playing. And my mother decided to take me to the game. And so we headed off from Kilray at half past five in the morning on this six-hour journey. Um, how times have changed. It wouldn't take six hours now to get from Kilray to Dublin. But Crow Park, Dublin was the Holy Grail, and Derry had reached the, the final. So we set off on this journey. I've never forgotten it. it was six, I was six years of age at the time. Within 15 or 20 miles, we had picked up these two young women uh, from a, a part of Derry. They were magnificent singers. And each county that we passed, we went through Tyrone, where they sang the mountains of Pomeroy, and we went through Armagh, and we went through County Down, and uh, each time we would hit the, the county, the girls would sing the appropriate song to that particular county. We stopped off for mass in Cookstown, I believe. It was the longest mass in Christendom. It took uh, an age. I love I love, uh, I love my own parish priest some years later who could finish Mass in about seven minutes. Um, that I enjoyed greatly. It gave me more time in the football field. And so this journey that we made was everything I'd hoped it to be. It was a definite extension of my Irishness. It was what I wanted to be. It's what I felt I was. And there was no greater place. And of course, with my mother beside me, you know, I felt, uh, I felt pretty safe. Um, by the way, Derry lost the final, and so we had a rather disappointing six-hour journey back. You know, I find myself, obviously, a primary school that uh, did not involve uh, Protestants or did not involve girls, you know. Went to a boarding school in St. Columns in Derry, and um, I regret to say that I only spent three years, three years learning Irish. I was reasonably bright, I was reasonably academic, reasonably, and, uh, and yet I couldn't seem to master Irish. Perhaps it was the teacher who used to pull my earlobes like you wouldn't believe. So if you think that I've got big ears, well, I think he's responsible for that. And uh, so I never could really get the hang of it. And of course, there seemed to be other subjects like geography and history, history of Ireland, which I loved immensely seemed to be more appealing at the time. It was around about that time where TV was coming to the fore, around about uh, early 60s. And suddenly, through TV, I saw a new world. I saw a soccer world. I saw a soccer world that I wanted to be part of. And yet, this dilemma where the GAA uh, were having enormous battles with soccer, I deliberated greatly. I wanted to think about playing those games in the English League in front of massive crowds at Anfield and at Old Trafford. And yet, at the same time, I loved, I loved Gaelic football. I loved everything about it. I loved my uh, Irishness. And I was in the process of trying to figure things out. Ironically, when I was playing for St. Malachy's College, as I moved, my family moved to Belfast, and I changed colleges from uh, St. Columns to St. Malachy's. And when I was there at uh, St. Malachy's, I, I participated in the football, the Gaelic football, against other colleges. One in particular was against St. Mary's, also of Belfast. And because I was playing soccer uh, for distillery, a little Irish league team, I was prevented from playing by the GAA from playing at Casement Park in Belfast where they were holding this game between